Welcome back. All right, so what we're going to do in this video is we are going to uh, focus on the grass clump. So I want to actually create grass clumps that I can go and scatter about in a scene inside of Unity uh, using the Houdini engine. Okay, so I want to create that model. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to create the high res model, all right, or the more um, high res version of this model. These are all going to be set on cards. But I want to create all the LEDs as well. And I want to show you guys how to do that here inside of Houdini so that when we import the FBX inside of Unity here, it'll set up the LEDs for us. All right, so that way, you know, it just saves us a step. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go into the grass clump uh, geometry node there. And the first thing I want to do is drop down a circle. All right, and what the circle is going to represent is the radius where our grass clump can actually, you know, take place. Um, I'm going to set this to the ZX plane and turn this into a polygon. All right. And uh, let's make sure to turn on our back face culling just so we can see here. You can see that the circle always comes in reversed uh, when it's set on the ZX plane like that. So I just dropped down a reverse node. Now, it's not completely necessary because the scatter will uh, scatter onto the uh, reverse geometry. But, you know, just for visualization, I like to reverse it. So next step, we want to drop down a remesh node here. And what this remesh node is going to do is it's going to take um, this geometry here and actually provide us a bunch of points in the middle. All right, so it's going to remesh the original mesh. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want more points. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to take all these points and we're going to find their distance from the center of the world here to create a gradient value. And this gradient value is going to allow us to create variations of height, um, bend. Uh, we can do a lot with that particular information. So I want to set myself up so I have all of that. Um, and now that I'm looking at it, what I want to do is I want to go and add a couple more uh, divisions to our circle just so we have a nice clean circle like that. Now if we want more points um, in the remesh, we just come to the remesh node here and uh, my apologies for the icon not showing up. I think I need to refresh my uh, user preferences, but this is a remesh node. Um, what we can do with it is we can change the target ed edge length. And what this will do, so you can see this slider right here, what this will do is it'll make it so that each one of these edges tries to reach this particular distance. So if I were to make this bigger, I'm going to have less points because all these edges are trying to be a value of 0.5. So if I make it smaller, we're going to get more points because all the edges are trying to be a value of 0.9 now, right? So that length. So that's what that does. All right, so with all of that particular data what i want to do is i want to put some noise on this because you know nothing in nature is that is you know super perfect so i want to add some noise uh, for a grass clump just another way to add some more variation so i'm going to drop down a point expression node and this will allow me to create uh, radial uh, normals and the reason why i want to create radial normals is because i want to use a mountain node after this uh, but let's focus on creating these radial normals so currently you can see all of our normals are uh, vertex normals and we know that because they're green lines all right um, what i want to do is i want to have all these normals uh, pointing out from the center okay so we can use that information to place our grass cards uh, appropriately and so i'm going to switch this attribute over to normal like that and what we can do is there's a little drop down over here that says spherify n right here so if we put that in you could see that we actually get normals that are in a radial fashion where they're spherified. And all it's doing is it's taking the current position of the point and subtracting the center. And that gives us a normal. All right, perfect. So that's gonna work out well. The next thing we, we wanna do is um, drop down a mountain node. And this will allow me to um, add some noise to it. And the reason why I wanted the normals radially like this is because the mountain node is gonna use the normals to displace the geometry. So you can see now it displaces it perfectly on a flat plane there and that's what I'm looking for because I want my grass clump to have a little bit more um, kind of a natural feel to it so I can adjust all this stuff appropriately like so and it just gives me a better um, more natural shape uh, you know one thing we could do also is we could actually put the remesh down here and remesh it after the fact and that'll give us something a little bit more clean in terms of our points because you'll notice that if I had it up here what happens uh, with the mountain node is we get some, if we try to push this too far, the points start to overlap each other. All right, so by 
putting the remesh node down below the mountain node, uh, we clean that up. Cool. So now we have a lot more control there. We can change that element size. I think I'm going to do something like that. Looks pretty good for now. All right, so next step in this is we need to do um, a little bit of wrangle or vex expressions here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a, a wrangle node, an attribute wrangle node. And the first thing I, I really want to do is I want to take the center of this particular object and I want to find the distance for each point. Uh, I want to find its distance away from the center. Okay, so to do that, uh, it's pretty easy. All we need to do is we need to find our current center of our object. All right, because I don't want to use the world center because the shape is now offset. Let's go back here. Because the shape is offset, so the center could actually be, um, you know, not necessarily a world center. You could use the world center, but this is a, a cool way to do this. So I'm just going to call this variable center. And what we're going to do is utilize the get BB box uh, center method and just pump in the geometry that is coming into the first input here. So zero. All right. So that gets me the center. Um, what I want to also do is I want to find the, the maximum size of this particular object. Now, this is pretty hard because uh, we can't just use a box necessarily for this. Uh, well, I mean, you could, but what I want to do is find something that's a little bit easier to uh, handle in terms of getting our max size here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drop down a sphere like so. And you'll notice that the sphere node actually has an input right here. All right, so I'm going to pass that into there. So I'm going to take the remesh, pass it into the sphere, and you'll notice that we get a sphere that actually encompasses our geometry perfectly. So now what I can do is I can find that or use that radius of that sphere, okay, as my max bounding box size. And this will just help us create um, a more accurate gradient. Okay, cool. So let's actually turn off that template flag there. All right, so... Let's do another uh, vector variable, and this is going to be our box max. And I'm going to equal this to our uh, get uh, BB box max, but this time we're going to get the maximum from um, our sphere. So the input or the geometry coming into input one there. Okay. And just for good measure, let's make sure our sphere is set to polygons here. All right. So it just sets it to a polygon. Cool. So now we have all the information that we need. All right, so we have the center and we have the box max. And we know how big the sphere is and we know where the center is of our particular grass patch right here. Okay, so let's go and actually determine a, a smooth gradient, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say float uh, gradient is equal to our fit. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to fit our current position, okay, with our center. So the old, all right, is the center. And then the old max is our box max. Okay. And we want to fit that between zero and one, like so. Oops. And this isn't actually going to work uh, right off the bat. And uh, I wanted to set this up uh, this way because I wanted to show you how to debug uh, certain VEX um, issues that might pop up. So you'll notice that we get this green line underneath the gradient. We also have this warning over here. All right, so if I were to middle mouse click on my attribute wrangle node here, um, what will happen is it'll give me some information about this. It says that we can't cast from vector to float. And that's actually good information um, because what we're trying to do is we're taking a bunch of vectors. So at P is a vector, center is a vector, box max is a vector, but we're trying to fit it between zero and one. All right, and that obviously can't work because we can't go from a vector to a float without specifying, you know, some sort of conversion. So what we actually need to do is we actually need to find the distance. So I need to find uh, uh, what's called the center distance, like so. And what I want to do is I want to find the distance uh, between our center and our box max. So what's that distance between our maximum position and the center? Because then what we can do is we can actually fit that, all right, because this comes out as a float. We can use this information right here to fit our current position, all right, uh, between zero all right, so we can say zero, and instead of box max, we can use our center distance now, because this is a float. We want to fit that between zero and one. But we need to take care of this last issue right here, because our app P is also a vector. So this is the distance from the actual center of the object as well. All right, so we need to do one more conversion. So we need to do a float, and we'll say uh, point uh, distance. 
like so. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, distance, if I could type, there we go. So distance from our center to our current point that we're working on, like that. So now we can get rid of this at P, and we can say point distance. All right, so that's how we take care of those issues inside of uh, uh, VEX here. All right, and that's how we have to kind of convert things down from vectors to float distances, and then we fit it to 0 and 1, because I want a value that goes from 0 to 1, you know, as we go from the center. Cool. All right, so now we have a gradient. So let's actually take a look at that. So we can say at CD is equal to uh, gradient. And there you go. So now we have a nice soft fall off between the center. So what I really want is I want a one minus. So we could do it here. We could say one minus right here. All right, and that'll reverse it. Or we could do it up here. And I'm probably going to do it up here uh, just so I know that my gradient value is all ready to go for me. So there we go. So now we have a nice uh, smooth fall off. All right, cool. Last thing I, I really want to do here uh, before I close out this particular video is I want to create um, an actual value or a, a, a control for the user to uh, control this fall off. Now there's a couple ways you could do it. Um, one way we could do it is we could say float um, pow, or let's call it power, and we could just do a pow function. All right, so we want to find the power of the gradient um, with some sort of channel that the user can actually adjust. So by declaring CHF, I'm going to automatically create a slider down here that the user can use. So we're just going to call this the power, like so. There we go. And to get that to show up, I just hit this little button right here. And now if I were to, let's get rid of this line here, if I were to assign our color with our power, you can see that we are now adjusting the fall off. Pretty cool. All right, so one thing we also want to do is we want to make sure that we clamp it because if I put this down to really small values here, you'll notice that we're going to get values that don't go to zero. I, I always want, you know, a normalized uh, value. So uh, what I can do is I can say power is equal to our clamp. We'll call this power here. And we'll just clamp it between zero and one like so. Cool. It's always good just to say it's measure. So the other way that we could uh, do this, uh, we could go and say float uh, ramp. This gives the user even more control. So we say float ramp, and this is equal to a ch ramp. And what I want to do is call this my fall off. All right, and I want to pass in our gradient value, like so. Now we just clamp our, our ramp value instead here, and we'll pass in the ramp to the color. And now we need to go and create that ramp. And there you go. So now we actually have a different level of control here. Cool. So now you could have a little bit more denser grass in the middle here. Or you can create more of a smooth fall off. Right? So just different ways to control it. So what I'm going to do is close out the video there. That gets us pretty uh, set up already. Uh, the next thing what we want to do is set up our scatter and get all of our normal directions in place. So that way we can go and copy a bunch of uh, grass carts to this particular uh, clump mesh. Okay, thanks so much.